Miss Noss, back in 1937 when you went deer hunting with your husband, tell us about that trip. Well, we went deer hunting uh, November the 7th, 1937. The women stayed at camp and the men went out for deer. Doc was up on a mountain and he discovered an entrance to something. He climbed the top of the peak, getting a, a surveillance point so he could look around in Rio Basin and see if perhaps there were some deer. Kicked his boot against a, a rock. Hit him right in the face. He knew he'd found something somebody'd been in. He could see a pole ladders that went down. Well, he uh, kept looking at it and looking at it, and he finally decided to uh, step on it and see. He put his weight on one of them, and they snapped under his weight. He put it back and covered it up the best he could. Of course, it was later that Ova and Doc went back uh, to verify what they had found on Victoria Peak. His experiences on the ground must have been beyond description. The journey he took in the fissure, pretty scary stuff. The fissure is a, a large crack that uh, bisects the mountain massive void that was 20 stories high. 20 stories a long drop. And the fissure back in the day was zigzag walkways of dirt that are wedged in between these two solid walls. It looked like there was a ant farm heading down. There's a few places where you have to get on your back and crawl like a snake, and you're dropping into something on the other side that you have no clue. No protective gear of any kind. Ovenos is up top waiting for me. Doc should be dead. He didn't know what he'd found at the time. He just uh, knew that when he got to the bottom, he'd know more than he did when he started. Doc described a series of caverns, an intricate labyrinth of passageways, some man-made caverns. Some of them are walled up, and he would break the bottom parts of it and shine his light in there. He dropped eight or 10 feet on a ledge. And to his north there, there was a hole there that you couldn't see the bottom of. They've always talked about this eight foot hole and you would drop something down there and you'd never hear it hit bottom. But after a little while, there would smell would come up like a real bad smell. He said there were skeletons down there. He was tied up to a post. And In one case, he saw 79 skeletons inside of this thing. And he said he knew there were how many there were because he would count the skulls. I could imagine the light flickering and the skeleton just being illuminated for that moment. It was totally frightening to him, I'm sure. One skeleton in that room was sort of propped up. It was mummified. It still had some dried flesh on the skull and even a little patch of hair on it. Uh, it frightened him so badly that his hair turned white and he had a white streak from that time on. And I'm sure there's a medical description for that condition, but uh, you notice the photographs of him after the fact, he had the, the white streak in his hair. He got him down this path. There was a statue of a man about four or four feet tall. And they're standing to guard the treasure. Well, he uh, couldn't believe it. He'd found a treasure storehouse. Boxes of jewelry, coins, everything was old. Conquistador, breastplates, swords. He brought a couple of swords and knives out and uh, some coins. My understanding was that Doc was getting that ready to pedal, start getting it out to convert it into cash, but never at the time knew that there was any gold. It was just stuff, old stuff. One morning, he uh, told me it must have been a big market for pig iron in the early days. 
And I said, why, why did you say that? And he said, well, I never seen so much. Eventually, Ova said, can you bring me one of those bars? I want to take a look at it. I said, well, Doc, this is yellow. Look at it. And he rubbed his head, and he said, well, babe, if that's gold, and all that other is gold like it, we can call John D. Rockefeller a tramp. When Doc went back down there and counted the bars, there were 16,000. 16,000 bars of gold. There was so much that it was beyond description. And he said nobody would believe him anyway. So they were well aware of the fact that wealth like this could change people's personalities. But their efforts were actually a continuation of events that probably started 300 years before that. There's a, a big piece of history waiting to be discovered uh, inside Victoria Peak. The leading and most plausible theory about the origin of the valuables inside Victoria Peak uh, always takes us to the conclusion that it had to be tied up with the exploits of the Apache people and their ancestors. The Apache were a people who migrated into the Southwest in the 15th and 16th centuries. So what were they doing? They were plundering from the Spanish, slaughtering them in the roads, right, and taking what they had, possibly to retain some kind of spiritual power over them. The Indians were robbing pack trains in that part of the area and stacking it in there. What kind of things are in the mine? Oh, there was trunks, chests. Some was stamped Wells Fargo. They claimed that it was a uh, result of a robbery of, of some gold that was being transported for or by them for some mining company. They've always told the story that there were five distinct types of bars that Doc brought out of the mountain. The reason there were five different types of bars is that the bullion inside the peak came from different sources at different times in history. Carlotta is Maximilian's wife who was the emperor of Mexico in the 1880s and heard of an assassination plot against them and took the valuables of the palace and sent them up north. The Apaches targeted Maximilian's caravan, which left from Mexico and was lost. So Doc was convinced that an oval top box that he had found stamped in there said Carlotta. At that point, Doc was pretty convinced that this is from Maximilian, including a seven and a half pound gold crown, which is always thought and believed to be Carlotta's. 